Third grade friends and adults alike, this is Ms. Marshall coming at you with a virtual lesson, our first one. So let's get into it. We're learning about time. Love it. So a lot of you already know how to tell time, how to read a clock, and all my beautiful, wonderful things about it. But as a quick review, let's go over what we know about clocks and telling time. So as you can see, I have two clocks already posted here. I have what's called my analog clock and my digital clock. I mean, we all know how to read a digital clock, right? That's the stuff that's on our phone, our smartwatches, the computers. We're all great at telling time with a digital clock because I don't have to figure out the math of the minutes. Now, what we're really going to focus on is my analog clock. This is going to be my big focus of how to read an analog clock. Yes, it's still important. So we're going to learn about analog clock. But as a quick review of it, you guys should already know, but quick review, let's talk about the analog clock. I have two hands, right? I have my long hand and my short hand. What does my short hand tell me? My short hand tells me what? Does it tell me the minute or the hour? It tells me the hour, right? So my short hand tells me the hour. So what oops, hour are we talking about here? Short hand's pointing at the three. So right now it's the hour of three o'clock. Three something. It is three something. So short hand's the hour. What's my long hand telling me? My long hand tells me the minute, right? So my short hand's the hour, my long hand's the minute. So what time is it right now? It's three o'clock, right? Because remember the top of my clock is zero. So if the top of my clock is zero, then what is the one? Ooh, some of us might not remember. Remember, these are my hours on the inside. Tells me all my hours it goes by. So if I have one, if I have my minute hand that's pointed right here, it represents five minutes have gone past. And if my minute hand points here, it means that 10 minutes have gone past. And if my minute hand is right here on top of it, it means 15 minutes have gone past. Are we sensing a pattern here? Zero, five, 10, 15. What do you think my next one is? 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, now, do I put 60 up at the top? Do I ever say it's like 360? Do I ever put 60 at the top? No, I never say it's 360. Have you ever seen a clock written where it's 360? No, that doesn't make sense. So, there's a reason why I made you learn your multiplication facts, especially by fives. Because it's going to come and help in handy when reading a clock. Because 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 5 is 25, and you get the rest of the gist. So, each of my hours tells me 5 minutes. So let's go to a clock real quick to see if we can tell our time. So right near, whoops, I have a clock. It tells me it's 4 o'clock. If I scooch my hand over, it's now 4.05, 4.10, 4.15, and then 5 o'clock. If you can tell from me moving it, you can see the hour hand is slowly moving along with my minute hand. So that doesn't mean my hour is just going to stay here forever. It's not just going to always stay at the 6. Because even if I move my hour hand, my minute hand moves too. So keep that in mind as well. But as a quick review, you all know how to 
read it, we count by fives, long hand is minute, short hand is hour. So as a quick reminder, 60 seconds equals what? A minute. 60 minutes equal what? An hour. And 24 hours equals what? One day. All right. Good reminders. So that's kind of my quick review of what you should already know kind of about time. Remember, my hour hands count by fives for the minutes. Short, hour, long, minute. And we all know these beautiful facts. All right, so that's my quick review over what you should already know about time coming into third grade. Now, for my new stuff, we're going to take a step back, okay? We're going to take a step back and kind of connect my dots. So, as my introduction, as you can see here, I have a quarter and what looks to be like a football scoreboard, all right? So, let's talk about it. If I have one quarter, I have how much money? I got 25 cents, right? How many quarters do I need to make one whole dollar? I need four of them, right? Four quarters equal a dollar. So I need four of those to make a dollar. Well, then I also have how many quarters are in a football game? Four, right? So if we're kind of catching on, if I say a quarter, it means one fourth. Quarter means a fourth, all right? That's just my quick review reminder of quarter in its definition. It means one fourth. Now you're probably thinking, Miss Marshall, we just went over time. You're talking about money. You talked about football. Now you're talking about fractions. What does this have to do with time? Well, let's see. So what we're gonna do is scroll on down to one of my examples. As you can tell, I have a clock here and I have a fraction pi with the title of quarter past the hour. Well, let's see, I said a quarter equaled what? One fourth, right? So let's color in one fourth of my pi if I'm talking about quarters. Boop -a -doop -a -doo, quarter past it. So I have a quarter right here. Guess what? Can I just split my clock the same way? into fourths. Imagine I had straight lines. <laughs> so I can also split my clock into it. Look at my long hand. My long hand tells me the minute, right? My long minute hand is telling me that it is a quarter past the hour. All right. It has been one quarter, because see one fourth is a quarter. It is one quarter past the hour. So what time is it then if I erase all of this? What time would it be then if it is a quarter past the hour? Well, remember how to tell my time, remember? So we know it's past two o'clock. So if it's a quarter past, two o'clock, that means it is five, 10, 15. That means it is then two, 15. So anytime it says quarter past, my minute hand is gonna be on the 15. So let's go back to my anchor chart. Back at my anchor chart. So if I have 15 minutes, it means what? One quarter past the hour. All right. So as we go back, my minute hands up to 15. It is one quarter past the hour. So you see some number lines here. You're like, hold up. Why is there a number line? Well, let's see. I can also tell time by using a number line. So say I have one 
to two. Actually, I don't want one to two. Yeah, I want one to two. So let's see if I can split this just like we do our normal fraction number lines. I have one and one fourth, one and two fourths, and one and three fourths. So we said a quarter equals to one fourth. So let's say we're right here. One and one fourth could also mean as I scroll down, hopefully, Let me erase this. One and one fourth could also mean one o'clock, one fifteen, one thirty, and one forty five and then two o'clock. Now we talked about it being the minute hand being at the three means 15. You're like, where'd you get 30 and 45? Well, if I moved this hand down here, halfway is 30 minutes and the other split would be 45 minutes because how many minutes are in one hour? 60. And if I do 60 divided by 4, it's 15. All right. So I could also tell time using a number line. So I could also just be like, if I want to know 115, boom, right here. So I have my quarter past the hour. Quarter past the hour means what? 15 minutes. All right. So we got quarter past the hour. Now let's go to half past. Well, if I have half past, let's see here, that's half of my pie. Let's make my clock split in half as well. Boop. And when I split half of it, my minute hand's pointing at the what? The six, right? So if it's pointing at the six, I am halfway around my clock. And what minute does that mean? Well, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So what hour is it past though? If my shorthand, my hour hand is between the 2 and the 3. Is it 3 o'clock yet? It's not quite 3 o'clock. So then my half past 2. So it is what? 2, 30. So if I have quarter past is 15 minutes past, half past is how many minutes past the hour? It is then 30 minutes past the hour. So 30 minutes equals half past my hour. Because what's half of 60? 30. So 30 minutes is half past, 15 minutes is a quarter past, there's only one left. What we got left. Now we have my minute hand pointing all the way at the nine. So if I split this up, it's three fourths of the way past my hour, right? But that's way too hard to say. Who wants to say three fourths past the hour? So that's not what I say. I now then will say quarter to the hour. Because like I said, no one wants to say three-fourths past the hour. That's way too hard. So quarter two. Well, let's talk about it. My minute hand's pointing at the nine, so that minute is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So that's at the 45th minute. So, but what's my hour hand pointing at? It's not quite past one. So what time is it? If it's not quite to the one, it's 12.45, right? So if it's 12.45, how much more do I have to live to go to my next hour? Because remember, I don't want to say three-fourths past 12. 
That doesn't make sense. That's way too hard to say. So I'm going to say a quarter to, what's my next hour? 1. So 12.45 is also known as a quarter to 1 o'clock. If I also had, say I had my, whoops, delete. Say I had my minute hand here. It's not quite 7, is it? No, nope, but remember, my minute hand's point the nine, so that means 45. So it's a quarter until quarter to 7 o'clock, because I just have one quarter left to go. So quarter to 7 o'clock. All right, so let's look at this real quick. So if 30 minutes is a half hour, 15 minutes is a quarter past my hour, what does 45 minutes equal then? 45 minutes equals a quarter to the hour. So let's get some practice in with my clock real quick. So let's say I have the time of right here, 7.30. We can see it says 7.30. My minute hand's at the 6, and my hour hand is smack dab in half between 7 and 8. So it is half past what hour? 7. 7.30 is also known as half past 7. What if I have my minute hand here? Well, remember, if it's at the 3, it's 5, 10, 15. So it, uh, minute is 15, the hour is past 7. So it is a quarter past 7 o'clock. And if I have my minute hand here, I'm not real close to that 8, but I'm over here at what minute? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I'm at the 45th minute. So I have a quarter to my next hour of 8 o'clock. So 7.45 is also known as quarter to 8 o'clock. All right. So I have my beautiful anchor chart here. Let's see. So, like I said, before the hour, so if it's 45, what can I say? I can say it's 745. I can also say quarter to eight. Remember, like I said, if it's 45, it's a quarter to my next hour. Or I could also say 15 minutes to eight. That's what that quarter to means. And then I also have my after the hour, if it's 815, it's also known as quarter past 8 or 15 minutes after 8 is what that means. So I'm going to have my anchor chart beautifully posted in this lesson so you guys can reference it and go back to it. But if my quick little review of quarter past, half past, and quarter two is kind of confusing, don't worry. Annie and Moby are here to explain the rest of it, okay? because I understand that this is my first virtual lesson, this is your first virtual lesson. You can't ask me questions right now that help clarify. We're all gonna try our best. Okay, guys? So there's just the three things, quarter past, half past, quarter two, to get to know today, all right? If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to message me. I will be here to try my best to help clarify. But in the meantime, let's see what Annie and Moby are up to and what they can tell us about quarter past half past and quarter two. All right. So stick with me. I'm going to try and get Annie and Moby pulled up.